So folks, I have three things to show you right now, and all of them are absolutely terrible for Marjorie Taylor Greene. You might call it a big dose of humiliation in three parts. First, Marjorie held an absolutely unhinged press conference, and while a lot of her supporters think it makes her look good, she looks like a total maniac, absolutely disrespecting and insulting a journalist, and looking like a total dumbass in the process. Then, I I have for you a brand new clip right from the J6 panel putting Marjorie at the center of the Trump plot unlike never before, putting her at very real risk of not only being interrogated, but ultimately being arrested and imprisoned along with Trump and the rest of the goons. And finally, and perhaps most pathetically, Marjorie Taylor Greene felt that she was mistreated last week in the House of Representatives, and she tried to hold a massive event, a massive party slash protest, if you will, hoping all of her Republicans would show up and support her as she talked about how everyone is mean to her. And guys, this is the best part. Literally no one showed up. Enjoy this three-course meal. Here's the problem I have. Joe Biden, then Senator Joe Biden, that made my school a gun-free school zone and has left American students like sitting ducks, targets for anyone that wants to go kill them. He's friends with these Republican senators, and I'll tell you who they are. Because I don't mind naming their names because people all over our country are furious at them. Senator Blunt, Senator Burr, Senator Capito, Cassidy Collins, Cornyn, who got booed off the stage practically in Texas, Ernst, Lindsey Graham, who promised me just a few years ago that he would not violate due process rights with red flag laws, broke his promise. Mitch McConnell, complete failure to Republicans. Murkowski, Portman, Romney, Tillis, Young. These are the Republican senators that Republican voters do not support anymore. We've got to change our Republican party and it needs to happen right here because if we don't start defending Americans' freedoms and rights and putting America first, our Republican voters are not going to want to put us in charge. We need to do a better job. The Senate gun bill is a complete failure and I'm so happy with our House GOP leadership saying that they're voting no against this bill and whipping against it. That's something I am extremely pleased with and I know Republican voters and independents and Amer gun owners, period, are gonna be thrilled with. So, so thank you for joining us and it's our job to defend the Second Amendment. Yeah. Well, I understand that we don't have guns in the UK, that is true, but we don't have mass shootings either. Children aren't scared to go to you school. You have mass stabbings, lady. You have all kinds of murder <laughs> and you've like got laws same, against nothing that. Like the same rates well, here. you can go back to your country and, and worry about your no guns. That's very kind we like ours here. Huh? Let's take a minute and explain why the president mentioned Jeff Clark's name to Mr. Rosen here on Christmas Eve. On December 21st, some Republican members of Congress met with President Trump in the White House to talk about overturning the 2020 election. Let's hear Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene talk about how this meeting got set up. I was the only new member at the meeting. I called President Trump on Saturday and, and said, we've got to have a meeting. Uh, there's many of us that feel like this election has been stolen. So on the screen, you'll see that President Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, tweeted about that meeting right after it happened. He said, quote, several members of Congress just finished a meeting in the Oval Office with President Donald Trump preparing to fight back against mounting evidence of voter fraud. Stay tuned. On the same day he met with these Republican members of Congress, President Trump called into a conservative political convention and he used the opportunity to pressure the Department of Justice to investigate his bogus claims. This sign has been attacked repeatedly. As a matter of fact, it's been, it's been attacked 11 times. Nine times it's been vandalized, twice it's been stolen. But there's been a very specific series of attacks that's happened, and there's seven of these. January 25th was the first report of, of 2022 was the first report of this type of destruction. And this is where, instead of people writing on it or stealing the sign, this was where someone decided to put a sticker on the sign with using Bible verses to attack my Christian faith and covering mostly the word female. You can take that one down, Taylor. 
Then the sign destruction continued. Each time we would replace it, the same thing would happen again. And I want to remind everyone, this is when our house offices have, were still closed to the public. So it was apparent that it was someone working, a staff member somewhere in our office building. So again, it showed up. Another sticker attacking my Christian faith, mostly over the word female. It happened on February 1st, 2022. Then on February 2nd, 2022. Then on February 22nd. You can put up another one, Taylor. And on February 28th. So each time the stickers were placed on the sign attacking my Christian faith. So my staff and I, we had been communicating with the house sergeant in arms multiple times, but we were never getting a response. And I had requested cameras multiple times, but not getting any cameras. Until finally, the house sergeant in arms came to my office and I talked to them out in the hallway and was very loud in the hallway about my need for surveillance cameras because I have nothing to hide. I'm perfectly fine with all the cameras in this building, all the cameras in Longworth where my office is. I, m myself and my staff have nothing to hide, but clearly there's other people that do. So I was demanding surveillance cameras because this entire time this had been going on at this point, it had been over a year. And the person that was continually at me and is angry at me, I did not know if this was a person that I got in the elevator with alone. I did not know if this person was someone that I may be. I don't have much more to add to that, guys. Marjorie Taylor Greene not only looked like an idiot in front of the international press, she not only got at the center of Trump crimes in a way we haven't seen yet, right at the J6 committee, she tried to have a big event and no one showed up for her. Literally one staff person. No one cares about Marjorie. Not her friends, not even her enemies care about her all that much.